Fast X Review, stupidly entertaining sequel offers more of the same. This article is more than 11 months old. Finn Diesel et al. return for an overstuffed Fast and Furious chapter that delivers giddily effective action, but an outsized and silly villain. The Fast and Furious franchise reached the ideal level of sublime ridiculousness with Fast Five, which brought Dom Toretto, Brian O'Connor and four films worth of gearhead rogues together for a compact heist thriller that's basically Ocean's Eleven with cars. It peaks with the ultimate smash and grab job as Dom and Brian attach a giant bank vault to their Dodge Chargers and drag it through the streets of Rio de Janeiro, occasionally thwacking their pursuers like an improvised wrecking ball. The films that followed have tried nobly to top the simple lizard brain pleasure of this moment. The skydiving cars in Furious 7 come the closest, but recent entries have started to grind like metal on metal, scrambling to figure out how to top itself. Fast X seems to recognise Fast 5 as the top of the franchise bell curve because it starts there, by retconning a super villain out of a previous villain's son. It turns out there are unforeseen consequences for killing a crime boss with a flying bank vault. By flashing back to the heist sequence, the film also announces itself as a return to the giddy excesses of the series' best moments, embracing high camp and cartoonishly destructive violence while leaving behind the glum tone of entries like The Fate of the Furious. It may be dumb as a box of rocks, but there's still something irresistibly vulgar about a film that nearly blows up the Vatican as a throat-clearing exercise. After yada yadding through an eye-rolling pee into family, which have become as obligatory to the series as James Bond's Martini Order, Fast X works quickly to set up a multi-film arc around Dante Reyes, Jason Momoa, the vengeful son of Rio Kingpin Herman Reyes. With a nasty sadistic streak and his father's incalculable wealth at his disposal, Dante doesn't seek merely to kill Dom, but make him and his associates suffer for his own personal amusement. He doesn't mind an entire city suffering too, after luring the team on a fake agency mission to Rome, he activates a bomb in a massive circular casing that rolls down the street like the boulder in Raiders of the Lost Ark, leaving a trial of destruction across the ancient city. Director Louis Leterrier has a long track record of mediocre blockbusters to his credit, including the Edward Norton version of The Incredible Hulk, Clash of the Titans and Now You See Me. But in taking the reins from Justin Lin, Leteria adopts a tone closer to his Transporter 2, which remains one of Statham's better vehicles. His camera pirouettes wildly around the action. Leteria is as addicted to drunk aerial shots as Max Ophels was to dolly tracks, and he leans into the comic absurdity as much as possible, leaving the physics of suspense to the mission. Impossible franchise. Dom and his friends treat missions like arcade games where they have all the cheat codes. The anything-goes mentality that drives Fast X backfires a little with Momoa, whose conception of Dante as a mincing, androgynous chaos demon owes a debt to Nicolas Cage in Face Off and Johnny Depp's Captain Jack Sparrow, but leans uncomfortably into the gay killer archetype. In a series that celebrates tough guy bravado, Dante represents a feminised reactionary threat. Though the bigger problem here is that Momoa isn't as gay.